Welcome to The Lisa Show. Hey, we should be having this conversation over lunch. As we were working on creating an episode about finding the best work-life balance, we had this conversation with Trey Christensen that we loved so much, we didn't know how we could cut it down to fit. Trey gives practical tips for balancing your career, but more than that, he gives a great vision of what good wellness can look like in all parts of your life. I think you're really gonna love it. So I'm here with Trey, who's the founder of a business and an app called LifeSculpt that's dedicated to enhancing personal well-being. And I like that description of self-care, you know, enhancing what is your your own individual well-being. So he um, has a lot of not only experience in this, but has talked to a lot of people about how you really implement this. Thanks for being here, Trey. Thanks, Lisa. I'm honored to be here. When we talk about self-care, a lot of people want to take a step back. You describe it, like I just said, as personal well-being. What, what is your whole philosophy about why we should take care of ourselves? Well, when I mention it as personal well-being, I like to think of the brain as a second body. You have multiple muscles in your body, so why wouldn't you consider your brain the same way? Um, every one of us has a creative side. Every one of us has a logical or analytical side, and we're all emotional in one way or another. Something stresses us out. So calling it just mental health kind of makes you think about uh, you're sad or you're frustrated or you're depressed, but it doesn't really take into consideration things like creativity, um, things like connection with other people or nature or animals. Hmm. So that's really interesting because when we talk about work and having sort of a work-life balance, I I think a lot of times we don't even know what we're talking about. So what if you have a a sort of job or a situation where you don't feel like you can be particularly creative or go out in nature or something for whatever you do? How do you find that or or advocate for that work-life balance? Oh, that is such a good question. And you know what? It's sad to admit that So many people don't know where the line is. Uh, Work-life balance can be tough if you, you know, you have a very stressful career, you're trying to climb the corporate ladder. I have a couple takeaways here, though. Number one being get sleep. You, You need to get sleep and you need to get balanced sleep. It doesn't matter how stressful your job is. You need that sleep. Cognitive function, your metabolism, your central nervous system, all of your hormonal systems, they're just out of whack if you get less than sleep. This has been proven time and time and time again. And that ties into when you leave work, you're still stressed, you're still thinking about something you may not have done well enough, as well as when you maybe went into work, you already had this cloud above your head thinking, man, I, I just have a crazy amount of work to get done today and my boss is going to be down my neck. So sleep is number one. Number two is build a new habit, and that habit is Stop taking work home with you. But I don't just mean that, and you're not allowed to talk about what happened in your day with your spouse or um, your roommate or whoever it may be. I mean, give yourself a brief window when you get home. If you need a vent, give yourself 30 minutes to talk it out and let that be the end of it. That's one door closed for the rest of the day. Um, But intentionality is a a huge, huge thing with a work-life balance because we work so hard at work. We want to support our family, but at the same time, we want to do good in the eyes of our peers and the eyes of our boss. Yeah, and we want so to get ahead of, too. You know, we want to, we're ambitious and we want to do that. So we feel like, you know, if if I if I just work hard enough, I can get to where I am, and then I'll worry about balance. And and sometimes I feel like Absolutely. that's sort of a tricky slope. <sighs> That is where a next point comes in of compartmentalizing. We want to balance things in our mind for work or for the activities done at work. So when we want to categorize things there, we think um, of tasks. You know, at work, we got to get uh, the most important thing done first because this is how we do better. Maybe our numbers reflect on this. Same with outside of work. We compartmentalize those things there, family, um, hobbies, chores, errands, all of those things. So if you can compartmentalize, even if you need to create brief lists, the keyword is brief. We don't want mile long lists of things to do in order of priorities. As far as when I get off work, I need to go drop the kids off at soccer practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that's important because we're focusing on family. 
does the laundry need to get done on time every week? Nope, it does not. Um, you know, things like that. Do the kids need to brush their teeth before school? Yes, because you're helping them build the habit. But if they skip a day, it's not the end of the world. So we're placing the importance on each aspect of whether it's work or whether it is um, home. Within that, though, something to help change the pattern of your brain is changing the dominance of your choices. Um, by that, I mean when you drive to and from work, you get in this pattern where your mind already knows where you're going, so you're taking the shortest route. So you drive to work the same exact route every day, regardless of traffic, usually. Uh, take a different route. If it takes five minutes longer, that's okay. Take a different route. Look at a different neighborhood. Um, the stimulation, stimulation you get from seeing new cars, um, new people walking their dogs as you drive, new neighborhoods, it builds new connections in your brain over mm. time. Um, not only that, you are learning. Um, so Salt Lake City, let's just use that as an example. You're driving from one end of the valley to the other to get to work. Um, you go the same way because you know where everything is. You don't need to use a GPS. You can get there just fine. If you can take a roundabout way, take a couple side roads, you might need a uh, GPS or something in the beginning, but you're building new connections in your mind, neural pathways, because you're eventually learning that you don't need a GPS to take that route. And in doing so, if you miss a block or a couple blocks, you now know how to connect to that new route without a GPS. I know that sounds a little convoluted. But no, you're just thing. trying new experiences. I appreciate you saying that, exactly. like, you know, this is the way that it sort of builds in your brain. I think my problem and, and a lot of people's is like, there's just so many things coming at them at the same time. There's, there's yep. almost too much yep. novelty. And, and as you were talking a little bit about compartmentalizing different parts of your life, I thought, I like the idea of that, but especially parenting. It's just it. Oh, it yes. It's just everything, and it. Yeah. And it's the most important thing, and it, it it doesn't stay in a neat little box, you know. At when the workday is 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 done. So when you think about, you know, really enhancing your personal well being while doing it under extreme circumstances of you know parenting and doing this you know, job, whether you love it or not, it doesn't matter. They're both demanding, right? They both demand different things of yes. you. Um, when they don't stay in their little boxes, what do you do? I think you take things as they come and just be okay with that. Uh, life is not meant to be, you know, a, a straight line. That's just not what life is meant to be. Us as humans, we adapt to things as they come at us. Um, Let's say one thing that a lot of people don't think about, a lot of parents, you know, just for a moment with the example of if you are a married couple and you have kids, how frequently do you set a specific day where you have a date night where it's just you and your partner? Um, if the kids are taken care of for two hours. How often does that actually happen? Because we think about the craziness. Uh, kids have homework. They need to be to and from school, appointments, sports. Like you said, it's it's crazy. It's never in a, a nice wrapped box. Um, the way that you help your mind confront all of that, what seems like craziness, but it's life, is being able to control what you can control. So that's why I brought up a date night. It's something you can control because you can say every Friday or Saturday night, uh, let's say from 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. is just me and your mom or me and your dad. Uh, because then your children will learn to know this is their time, they're in charge of this, and will be taken care of by the babysitter or by grandma. Uh, when something does come up, um, heaven forbid they get hurt at school or you know there's an accident, you have to take it in swings, um, and you have to learn to be okay with that. I used to be in this mind frame where if I called into work for anything last minute, whether I was extremely sick or a family member got hurt, I just felt guilty to my stomach. It made me feel sick. And I didn't consider that it's just part of life. If somebody on the other end, in this example, my boss, did not understand, then that has to be on him. So uh, what changed for you? How did you get to that next that point? To be honest, I learned a lot of things the hard way. I lost family members, and I finally said I, I love my job and being able to support my family and 
afford things I want to do, but is it worth missing out on things like this? Uh, I went to my sister's graduation a couple of years ago and it would have broken my heart to miss it. And I almost did because I didn't want to call into work. So my mentality, it wasn't just a flip of a switch. Yeah. It was just over time understanding that if I am not willing to accept the things outside of work and always put work before everything, I'm just less happy. I'm curious as to what your what self-care looks like it, for you personally right now. So I'm going to briefly talk about how I improved a couple things with my job. I work crazy long hours during my day job. So I work anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. And then when I get off work, I, I usually do another two to three hours of work on my business. But I, I realized that burnout just hits way too quick. So I need to start working on things that make me happy, make me feel relaxed. So when I get off work, I will normally take a warm shower because it's been proven that steam and warmth help relax your nerves, relax your body and bring you back to that centralized balanced state. Um, if I don't do that, uh, this time of year, especially now that the weather's cooling off, I connect with the outdoors and I take a, one of my dogs with me. Um, I do not get on my phone. I, I usually walk about a mile and a half to two miles. I do not get on my phone at all. Ironically, I don't listen to a podcast or music. I just listen to nature or cars. But I started practicing something, and it, it helps your memory, and it helps um, cognitive connection, so short-term spatial memory, being able to recall things. And when I go on a walk in the evening, probably around 7.30 right now before it gets dark, I walk through various neighborhoods and I smell people's dinners or I smell people's laundry. People are still mowing their lawn, uh, things like that, that have a lot of scents that are in the air. And what I do is I try to guess what they're cooking or guess the scent of the laundry. Hmm. And this helps me connect the thinking aspect while I'm still moving, while I'm also physically conscious of my dog walking beside me. And this is an easy practice for anyone to do. Um, another great example, if you are a gardening person, go for a walk and try to name a plant that you see or a flower. Um, the point here helping my mental health is I'm taking the focus away from these long hours I'm putting in. I'm spending it in nature, but I'm also using my brain sort of actively, but in a relaxed manner. And there's an amazing benefit to this where I'm, improving my short-term memory because I'm trying to think of these scents or I'm listening to the birds and trying to guess where they're coming from. And you don't realize that little things like this make us feel better. So when I get home 45 minutes later, I feel better. I'm in a, an entirely different mindset. Yeah. It's just a refocus. And, Absolutely. And sometimes we feel like, <laughs> like just the old cliche, time is money and I've got to be productive yeah. to do that. And you can forget the sort of intentionality of yes. the whole reason why one, you're living your life. Yeah. One more thing I want to mention, Lisa, and this is um, something I, I kind of started doing in the last year is I call it boosting your environment for a better mind. And this is something you can do at home, in your entire house, in your bedroom, your study, even just at a desk, and maybe you can do it at your desk at work. There are a plethora of scientific studies out there showing that various stimulations help improve mental health, reducing anxiety and stress, uh, promoting relaxation, those kind of things. So uh, I'll just briefly give you a few um, ideas for listeners to consider. Uh, so plants, scents, Sounds, lighting, colors, organization, decor, those type of things in your environment. So an example is rosemary. The scent of rosemary actually boosts short-term memory over time. And you would think, wow, a plant can do that. Um, it could be an essential oil in a diffuser. Lavender, everybody knows, typically promotes relaxation. When you listen to natural sounds, things like birds or a waterfall or brain. Um, they actually boost positivity. Obviously, they lower stress. People use them to sleep sometimes. 
just like binaural beats, which are um, different wavelengths of sound waves. In one ear, it takes in one wavelength. Another ear, it takes in another. Your brain will actually produce a third wavelength as it tries to understand two simultaneous wavelengths. The third wavelength that your brain creates is the binaural beat. And the slower and longer the wavelength is, the closer you get to a sleep wave, um, something that helps get you to a REM sleep or a light sleep. Uh, but you, you don't need to use it to sleep. You can use it as a background sound. Um, maybe you're reading a book and it just promotes additional relaxation. Uh, another interesting thing is red light in the evening, and it doesn't have to be literal red light. It can be um, in the spectrum of the red side of the light. It actually helps secrete melatonin, additional melatonin, in your brain so you can sleep better and obtain REM sleep easier. And the last thing I want to just mention is something like a better organization in your home or on your desk, even at work, promotes less anxiety and actually improves happiness. And you wouldn't think a clean desk would, but but trust me, it does. Uh, so those are just This is a so great because I'm going to tell my teenagers this. Science. <laughs> well, I... I implemented about two years ago, I finally caved and bought some Bluetooth smart bulbs that connect to an app on my phone. And I have them customized to my settings and my sleep cycle. So about the time I go to bed, that they start dimming and automatically changing more to that red light spectrum and less blue light. And and I also incorporated blue light glasses that I wear uh, right around 8 p.m., And it has helped my sleep improve. It has also helped when I wake up, I feel more refreshed. So that refreshed feeling when I wake up, I can take on the day. I can take on what comes to me at work. I can take on what happens after work. If you have kids and things are crazy, you then have the energy. So you can take this clear back to when I uh, mentioned compartmentalizing is if you can put an intentional focus on creating energy. Energy is created with these elements I mentioned, but it all goes back to the habit of your day. So if you form solid habits of sleep, waking up, you feel energized. We we know anybody with children or uh, maybe they're caring for somebody else in their family that sleep can often be interrupted. It's basically a given. Um, And that's okay. As long as we get balanced and adjust around that, that is okay. Yeah, I like your approach uh, that life will happen. You, you know, there will be interruptions. There will be times that you're going to need to adapt to all this different kind of change. But having those, you know, basic habits in place and setting it up and being really intentional about what you need is going to help you better at work and at life. And and we know that sometimes that overlaps. Yep. Evaluate everything. Evaluate your needs. Um, that's kind of what I want to end on is, if you're if you aren't happy with something now, will you be happy with it in the future? If it's something short term that's bothering you, will it continue bothering you long term? Um, and if so, begin addressing it now. Oh yeah, that's a great place to start. The Lisa Show is a production of BYU Radio. It's hosted by Lisa Valentine Clark and produced by McKay Menden and Becca Hurley, with music and post production by Sam Clausen. If you like the show, make sure to leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you have questions for the Council of Moms or just want to tell us about an experience you've had with the show, you can connect with us on Instagram and Facebook. Next week on The Lisa Show. It's funny because I feel like I have this conversation with all of my friends and we get to a certain point in a friendship where (laughs) people, where this is a topic that comes up and then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an introvert. And they're like, no, you're not. And I'm like, well, I am really. We have this very conversation. Yeah, it's... Interesting because at my core, I want to be just me and my family. And I want to always just be like, and to to a fault sometimes, like we have a common friend who's like, has made those comments before like, hey, buddy, when I invite you out, like, you know, it's nice for you to say yes and not just be like, sorry, I'm staying home. Yeah, every once in a while. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, for sure. I'm not going to do that though. Um, (laughs) (laughs) That's next week on The Lisa Show. Be sure to find it wherever you download your podcasts.